Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you all. My name is Nakyun Kim, and I'm a student of Dr. Maria Biamil. And uh, I mean, I'm here in place of Dr. Benke, who is supposed to be giving the first half of the talk, but he unfortunately couldn't come, so I'm filling in for him. And today, yeah, I'll be taking on from the core props like that Dr. Guang has introduced, and I'll talk about specifically about the greenhouse gas emission and the soil microbes. We already covered this, right? Cover crops grow between main uh, main crops, and then we mainly want to grow cover crops to help prevent the soil erosion by providing the physical um, physical cover and the uh, the anchors underneath the soil, and they also take up the excess nitro uh, nutrients in the soil so that they won't be lost, and they uh, and re release them slowly back into the soil as they decompose. And these properties are very important for uh, for us environmentally because um, nitrate leaching, we know that it's very um, devastating in the, our aquatic and the marine ecosystems. For, for example, the hypoxia zone in the Gulf of Mexico is quite serious, and we think that cover crop might be a solution for that. And we also also um, getting. Reducing the excess nutrients in the soil can help with the greenhouse gas emission, and especially uh, nitrous oxide is a very important um, greenhouse gas from the agricultural soils. Like 75% of the nitrous oxide em emitted in the U.S., we estimate that they come from the agriculture sources, and nitrous oxide is 300 times more potent than carbon uh, dioxide. So. And the soil microbiome comes in here as well because they are the drivers of the soil processes that affect um, nitrate leaching or the gas emission. For example, the microbes will cycle the nutrients in the soil and they can perhaps help or not in, with the greenhouse gas emission. And they are, the microbes in the soil are also a major carbon sink in the soil. So increasing that perhaps can help uh, getting out, getting rid of the um, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And also, of course, cover crops provide some um, beneficial symbiosis with the uh, cover crop and the crops. Uh, for example, like fixing nit nitrogen for the crop, and they can also um, suppress the pathogens that can harm our crops. This is um, a result from my 2020 study, which was a meta-analysis that summarized like 60 other studies that's out there. And just generally speaking, um, cover, having cover crops seems to increase the abundance the, and the activity of the microbes in the soil. Um, when it comes to diversity, we're not really sure, and that's why I did this further study with the data we have. And yeah, like this kind of this kind of general approach to look at the soil microbiome doesn't really tell me um, how these effect cover crop effects on the soil microbiome will translate into the ecosystem services that are crucial for agriculture. And there are many ways to uh, people are trying to look at this. Uh, some people are looking directly into the functions, like looking at the genes or the enzymes that are actually doing the work. And we can also look at ecologically, for example, looking at the core, core microbes that are present in like all, they're like the foundations of the, micro, uh, the microbial community in every soil. Or in my case, I'm looking at the indicators, the indicator microbes that are uh, representing some of these crucial functions in the soil. So cover crops in Illinois is not that major as you, as Dr. Guan already have, uh, shown you it's pretty marginal i think the major reason is that the, sh the growing season for cover crops are very short and yeah very narrow window for their growth so that they're not since like we need to accumulate some biomass for us to see it's some benefits from cover crops and the first study that i'm going to introduce to you from our group is the cover crop and tillage study we had five years of cover cropping in a corn soybean rotation with tillage and no tillage in 
in six sites. And we looked at the corn and soybean yield, the soil nitrate and nitrous oxide emission, and the indicator mi in microbe. So the cover, cro cover crops that we used first, we used the annual ryegrass after both corn and soybean, and cereal rye after corn, and hairy vetch after soybean. These two treatments are the ones that I looked at the microbes for. And then we had the radish after both corn and soybean, rape after both corn and soybean, and spring oats after corn, and red clover after soybean. And of course, we have the control where we had no cover crop. It was just bare fallow. And these were the sites. It was a pretty good spread along the latitude. As for the corn yields, only annual rye had some negative impact. Seems pretty uh, slight. It was just like around less than one uh, bushel per acre. And it seems like til chisel tillage also increased the yield a little. But when it comes to soybean yields, it did not respond to any of the treatments. Same for all the alcohol crops and both uh, tillage. The nitrate, uh, the annual ryegrass did a great job taking up the nitrate in the soil. And yeah, they were uh, significantly lower compared to other treatments. And and that all of, I think a lot of that owes to the cover crop growth throughout the years. For, so you, as you can see, 2014, 2015, barely anything growing. I think that's why, uh, and you'll soon see how this plays out with the soil nitrate and the nitrous oxide emission. So this is the soil nitrate through the years. And as you can see, the first two years, much higher than the later two years. And of course, that's because cover crop barely grew, they barely took up any nitrate. So that's why we found more in the soil, of course. And th this also translated into nitrous oxide emission. First two years, much higher than the later two years. I think that comes from the, all the nitrate that was in the soil that denitrified into nitrous oxide. And now for my part, the microbes. In general, uh, you, these are the, um, these dots are the cover crop treatments. The, uh, the blue dots are zero rye and hairy vetch. The red dot is the annual ryegrass. And the yellow dot is no cover crops. And what I noticed is that the abundances of these microbes were most <clears throat> different between the zero rye and hairy vetch versus the control. No, no cover crop and the annual ryegrass. And I found some interesting um, microbes that were pretty sensitive to these treatments. For example, I found some root colonizing uh, bacteria that will promote plant growth. Um, I also found denitrifiers in both cases. Like one, one would increase with the cover crops, but others, this another one, um, decreased with, with cover crops. So that was pretty interesting. And I found some more interesting uh, fungi as well in the soil. And as you can see here, depending on whether there was a tillage or no tillage, the relationship flipped, as you can see. And the, uh, the abundances of these microbes did not respond to tillage when they were under uh, cereal rye grass, cereal rye and hairy vetch cover crops. And I found some inter interest. Some of them were pretty interesting. For example, this uh, U penicillium. This fungus um, is an endophyte, and they are known to pro produce some antibacterial and antifungal metabolites. And and this one here seems like they are parasitic to insects. Perhaps that will play out beneficially. We will see. And it seems like under CRI and Herivage hairy vetch, they don't respond to tillage, but when when they're under annual ryegrass or uh, no power crop, it seems like these increase with the uh, no-till. So in conclusion for this study, annual ryegrass reduced corn yields, but they were better at taking up the nitrate as well. And chisel tillage increased corn yields, but soybean did not respond to cover crops nor tillage. And it seems like uh, the biggest factor was how much the cover crops are actually grew, that's of, of course. And 
seems like what's uh, most important here in Illinois for these cover crops to be is that they are winter hardy. I think that's why cereal rye, hairy vetch, and annual rye grass did better because they actually grew like through the they they withstood the winter. And from my results, I can definitely see that the soil microbes are um, responding to the cover cropping, and perhaps there is some potential changes in their um, the, in the functionality of the soil microbiome. And we'll see further. We, uh, the second study I'm going to introduce is on the cover crops with the three uh, nitrogen rate. And in this study, we had a 36 uh, a field that was um, managed for 36 years consistently with three on three uh, nitrogen rates, 0, 202, and 269 kilograms per hectare. And we just introduced two years of legume and grass cover crops. And we just compare, compared how the soil microbiome responded to that uh, under bear fallow. So in, <clears throat> I also found some denitrifiers in both cases. They either uh, they increased either with cover crops and no no cover crops. We'll have to see how that plays out, like in the actual um, how much they're contributing to the nitrous oxide emission. But one thing that I noticed is that um, with the cover crops, I found the uh, nitrogen fixing, like nodule forming bacteria, increased with cover crops and a mycorrhizae that forms symbiosis with the crops increasing with cover crops. And also some more um, interesting fungi as well, a lot of endophytes that lives inside the plants to provide benefits. And it seems like they were more sensitive to uh, nitrogen rates when they were not under cover crops. So like when we put out the cover crops out there, it seems like these fungi are less sensitive to uh, nitrogen rate. So the conclusion for my this study was that I detected more plant symbionts under cover crops and that denitrifying indicators are found regardless of the cover cropping. And fungi seems to be more resilient to change from the nitrogen uh, fertilizers under cover cropping. So the take home message is that the weather plays a very a huge role when it comes to how effective the cover crops are in the Illinois. And cover crops that grow consistently were annual ryegrass, cereal rye, and hairy vetch. And soil nitrate decreased when these cover crops grew long and well enough to scavenge all the nitrate, nitrogen in the soil. And the decrease in nitrate also translated into less nitrous oxide emission. And cover crops make the imported microbes more resilient to management. And they seem to recruit more uh, plant symbionts that can be beneficial. And that is all from me. Thank you. And I'll take any questions.